So I told you your quiz is going to be tomorrow. Any question? Uh, so those are just two different uh, letters. So it just we use uh, theta and uh, gamma. We'll, won't use too much, um, but phi is another letter that we're going to use for angles. I've used it a couple times. So our Greek letters that we use, theta is going to be everywhere. So that's theta. Oh. There we go. So that's theta. A sideways theta is called a phi. We're going to use a few Greek letters when we get into vectors. I guess I'll write them all up now. That's a, well, that's a bad alpha. There's alpha, beta, gamma is a upside down alpha. I think that's really about all that we're going to use. Occasionally, you might see a delta. The capital delta looks like this. I don't think we're going to use it too often, though. And that delta is a capital. The lowercase delta, which you won't see until calculus 2, looks completely different than the capital delta. And if you're trying to win. Uh, Scrabble. I want to say this one C, which is spelled X I. Uh, that's not really used at all uh, until we run out of Greek letters. If you're like majoring in math, maybe, and if you're in grad school, they start using these letters. They use a lot of other ones first. Um, what other ones? Cool. My favorite is the tornado. Looks kind of like that. I want to say that's Zeta, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, there's a whole Greek alphabet, capital and lowercase. But we're mainly going to be using just those two uh, until we get into vectors. Greek letters are way more fun to draw than ours. So we looked at the first quadrant of the circle. So let's continue uh, with the circle. What we're going to do now is we're going to draw the full unit circle. So we're going to draw one huge circle. This is the one that will be in your textbook. Um, one of you showed it to me yesterday. Do you have the, yeah, what page is that on? Uh, 724. Page 724. Now when you do look at that, uh, the values in that unit circle, they rationalize. So 1 over square root 2. If you rationalize it by multiplying by square root 2 over square root 2, you would get two, uh, square root 2 over 2. So that table in the book and probably a lot of them that you're going to find online are going to have the rationalized versions instead of the 1 over square root 2. doesn't matter which of the forms that, uh, that you want to use. So we're going to draw a really big circle now. And we're going to draw all the angles in the circle. So here's the first quadrant. So what I'm going to do first is draw, let's actually draw the thirds in first. So we'll draw the thirds, and then we'll come back and draw the quarters. So I'm going to do my best to mark off thirds right here. So once we have all the thirds marked off, then I'm going to go and mark off the quarters, which will be right in between the thirds, right there. So those are where those angles are going to intersect the circle. Uh, let's see. I want to use a straight edge to make these lines actually straight.
So I'm just connecting corresponding. Oh, that didn't work so well. So we're pretty much drawing a bicycle wheel, or a wheel with lots of spokes in it. We're just trying to be careful about where the spokes intersect the wheel. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is there's a couple gaps in here. So I'm going to use the green pen here. Don't draw these, uh, these green lines in. I'm just going to draw them in temporarily and then come back and erase them. If everything was spaced out evenly, you would also get these green angles right here. Uh, they would correspond to uh, pi over 12. So each of those would be uh, pi over 12 apart. We will look at pi over 12 angles, but not quite yet. So our wheel is basically missing a couple spokes. So the spacing is a little bit strange. And now I'm just going to reproduce the first quadrant. So test yourself, see if you can draw the first quadrant, all the angles, and the, the values of the five points there. So there's our first quadrant laid out. So why do fractions suck? How do you make fractions more tolerable? We've done this before, at least yesterday we did this quite a few times. So we got to get a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is rewrite all these fractions with a common denominator. What denominator can I use that will work for all these fractions? 12 will work. So we're going to go with, uh, we're going to write all these as some pi over 12s. All right, good question? Yeah, so you can use either, this is uh, up here, you can use either of those two values. They're, they're the same value, so whichever are the two forms that you prefer. So absolutely use square root 2 over 2 if, that, if, if you prefer that. <coughs> all right, so let's make these fractions a lot nicer. So I'm going to write them all as some pi over 12s. So pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12. Pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12. Pi over 3, 4 pi over 12. And pi over 2 is 6 pi over 12. So once you see them laid out in 12th, it's a little more clear that we're skipping 1 pi over 12. And then we got 2, 3, 4 pi over 12. And we're going to skip 5 pi over 12, jumping right to 6 pi over 12. So you can see things laid out. This is where the other, the pi over 12 and the 5 pi over 12 would be, right there. So if you're in common denominator, uh, it's relatively easy to see why this pattern, why they're laid out like this. Otherwise, it seems a little arbitrary. Pi over 6, well, what about pi over 5? Well, pi over 5 is not, uh, doesn't fit the uh, pi over 12 form at all. So this would be, if they're all evenly spaced out, you'd also include the uh, 
single pi over 12 and the 5 pi over 12. But it turns out the sides, the xy values for those two are a lot uglier than what we've seen so far. So we're not going to go through that crazy geometry to get those right now. They're basically square roots of fractions with square roots inside. So they're pretty bad. So what we're going to do next is go into the quadrant 2. So we're going right past quadrant 1, we're going to jump into quadrant 2. So what coordinate becomes negative in quadrant 2? So our x coordinate is going to become negative. So what we're going to do is label the next four points here. So I'll start right here at the, uh, the first point that we go to in quadrant 2. What coordinates does this first point here in quadrant 2 have? So that point that I put a circle around. Negative 1 half. And what about the y coordinate? Square root of 3 over 2. So we got square root of 3 over 2 is a y-coordinate. All right. You don't need to memorize the entire unit circle because what we're doing is we're reconstructing it from just quadrant 1. So we're going to take quadrant 1 and we're going to flip it over, reflect it across the y-axis right here. And so our next point is this corresponds to the 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. All we're going to do is make the x-coordinate negative. And the next point corresponds to square root 3 over 2, 1 half. And we're just going to make our x coordinate negative. <coughs> and then last point's the easy one, negative 1, comma 0. So that takes care of the x, y values. Now we're going to label angles. How in the world do I get this angle here? So we could, so just looking at how things are spaced, we're going to be using this pi over 6 right here uh, and pi over 2. If we add those two angles together, we'll be right here. So if you're good with fractions, you can just add pi over 6 and pi over 2. If you're like me and you suck at fractions, well, that's why I wrote everything out in twelfths, so we don't have to think very hard. So I got 2 pi over 12 plus 6 pi over 12 is 8 pi over 12. And that will reduce to 4 pi over, no, 4 pi over, th what's wrong with my addition? 3 pi over 4, 2 pi over 3. times 4 times 4, yeah, 2 pi over 3 is the next angle. <coughs> OK. Any questions on that one before we jump into the next one? All right, what is the next angle that we need? There's a few ways to get it. One way is you can think, here's pi over 4. If I do another pi over 4 and another pi over 4, if I do three of the pi over 4s, I'll get right there. So that's one way to think about it. So it's going to be 3 pi over 4. You could also go pi over 2 and then another pi over 4. That's another way to get the 3 pi over 4. OK, so we got there. And now we're going to go to the next angle. What is the measure of our next angle? So here's where subtraction might help us out. If I just measure this tiny angle right here, just this little inside angle here, what would be the measure of that small angle? So it would be 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. So it's the same angle that we have here, just measure in a different spot. So <clears throat> we're basically just short of going to 6 pi over 6. We're just 1 pi over 6 short of going to 6 pi over 6. So this one here is going to be 
5 pi over 6. So if I went all the way over to the uh, negative x-axis, that would be 6 pi over 6. And I'm going to come back 1 pi over 6. So we have 5 pi over 6 is our angle here. So that's 5 pi over 6. And then down here, we just get regular pi. That's our half rotation. So now I'm going to clean up the middle and pretend like we were smart enough to not use any of that stuff. So there's our 5 pi over 6 and pi. So any questions about those angles in quadrant 2? So now we're going to fill in all the bottom values. So take a minute yourself right now and fill in all the values on the bottom. And all you need to do for this is look at the values on the upper half and just make the y-coordinates negative when you reflect them down. So just take all your y-coordinates above and reflect them down to be negative. So you're just going to take the point that's right above it and make that y-coordinate negative and do that for all uh, these seven points on the bottom. And don't draw the arrows that I'm drawing because it'll make everything look crowded and ugly. Any questions on the values that I wrote down here? So now we're going to go and fill in the angles. Now in my opinion, it's a little easier to fill in the values. Basically, you don't have to really think about fractions. You're just changing positive to negative, and that's about all you're doing. So now we're going to work on the angles. So what is our first angle that we hit right here? We're going to go in the regular counterclockwise order. So what's that first angle that we hit right there? So just think we basically are adding pi to pi over 6 right there. So it's going to be 7 pi over 6. We got 6 pi over 6 plus another pi over 6. So that's 7 pi over 6. And what is our next angle? So it's definitely going to be some pi. All these, I call these the quarter angles because they're all laid out nicely in the quarters right there. And that's going to be 5 pi over 4, because up here we had 4 pi over 4, and go another quarter. So we have 5 pi over 4. And this next one's a little bit more tricky. What is our next angle for that point that I circled? So it should be 4 pi over 3. And the way to get that? This is 3 pi over 3, and I want to go another, just think, pi over 3 more. So 3 pi over 3 plus that pi over 3 more gives me 4 pi over 3. All right, relatively easy angle. What's the one going straight down? So that'll be our 3 pi over 2. You could think of pi over 2 is right at the top, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, right at the bottom. All right, next up, 
what is our next angle? Our first one in quadrant four. Tricky, tricky. What two angles can I add together to get that angle? So what do I add to 3 pi over 2 to hit the angle that I want right there? So wh what is that measure right there? 2 pi over 2. That would be, I think that would just be the pi over, that would be the same as that guy right there, not the, the pi over 3 is going kind of most of the way around a quadrant, and the pi over 6 is only going a third of the way around the quadrant. So that little angle I labeled, that's a pi over 6 right there. Now fractions suck. So we'll go common denominator. It's a lot of 6. 9, 6. And 10 pi over 6. And now we get to reduce our fraction. All right, 5 pi over 3. So hopefully I'm convincing you fractions are not very fun right now. Unless you have comment. If, if we did all this in 12, so we would have been done like four minutes ago. And then we could just reduce them all at the end. Because we could basically just count off very carefully. All right, next one. This next angle is not too bad. It's a bunch of pies over four, but how many? So I see five pi over four. There's 6 pi over 4. So we got 7 pi over 4 right there. Another way to think about it, we're pi over 4 away from 2 pi right there. So we're just uh, pi over 4 away from uh, 8 pi. 8 pi over 4. Uh, all right, last angle. What do we have for our last angle? So this guy here would be 2 pi. This angle, if we just measure that guy, is pi over 6. And of course, we should think of everything in 6. So if I did a full rotation, I would get 12 pi over 6. So yeah, we're one short of 12. So we got 11 pi over 6 to get there. There's our unit circle all drawn out nicely. Unless you really like memorizing diagrams, I recommend you only keep track of the first quadrant because it's a lot to try to remember. And really, pretty much everything, you, you can recreate this everything here from just the first quadrant. And I'm going to show you how to use reference angles in a little bit so that we can use the first quadrant a little more effectively. So we don't have to think about, especially like, oh man, what is this weird angle down here? Is it in thirds or six? Uh, so we're going to use reference angles uh, to figure out uh, other values here. Uh, but this is a good exercise to just think about adding angles together. How are things geometrically spaced out around the unit circle? So reference angles, the way we're going to write it is theta with a bar on top. So you just pronounce that theta bar. So we'll just call it theta bar. And what is the definition? Theta bar is the smallest positive angle from theta to the x-axis. So we're going to do a few examples here where I'm going to give you a theta, and then we're going to figure out the reference angle, or theta bar. So 
So first one, we'll do theta equals, we'll make the first one pretty straightforward. All right, so find theta bar when theta is 5 pi over 4. So for this first one, I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit and look at our graph, look at the unit circle that we just drew out. So 5 pi over 4, well, I see that angle right here. And I'll switch colors. Do not draw on top of your beautiful unit circle. I'll, I'll redo this work that I'm doing uh, on a separate unit circle that I'll sketch out really fast. So just uh, watch what I do because uh, you can't erase so easily. So here's 5 pi over 4. So we're thinking about this angle right here. What is the shortest positive angle back to the x-axis? So that's the reference angle right there. Now when I say shortest angle, here's another angle back to the x-axis, but that's the long angle back to the x-axis, not the short angle. And we want to make sure it's positive, so it would be measured in the counterclockwise way. What is the measurement of that green angle right there? Starting from pi, ending at 5 pi over 4. All right, so fractions suck. So let's make them not suck as bad. How far is it from 4 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4? 1 pi over 4. So everything's easy if you have common denominator. All right, so that's pi over 4. All right, so what I'm going to do is recreate this on just a unit circle without all the extra information on it. So I have to, first of all, know where 5 pi over 4 is. So we're in fourths, so I'm going to measure in fourths. So instead of using pi, I'm going to use 4 pi over 4. Instead of two pi, uh, 3 pi over 2, I'll go with 6 pi over 4 for our bottom angle. And then you can see pretty clearly four pi, uh, 5 pi over 4 is going to be right in between those two, right there. And then the positive angle, the smallest positive angle back to the x-axis, I'll do that in the black marker, will be right there. So now we see 4 pi over 4 uh, over to there, and then another just 1 pi over 4. So my reference angle is that 1 pi over 4. And this is theta bar. So theta bar is just 1 pi over 4. So that's our first example. We'll do some more examples. Let's go with, let's do some six. So now we're going to have a negative angle. What does negative and what is an angle uh, being negative? What property does that correspond to when we think about our angle? It's going to go clockwise. So it's going to go backwards from the way we're used to. So draw a unit circle. Now I, I'm going to go label things going backwards. So I'm going to start. Uh, my first label is going to be at the bottom of this unit circle because so I'm going to go clockwise around now. So at the bottom, and I don't want to do negative pi over 2, I want to use comma denominator, so that would be negative 3 pi over 6. So there's our first angle we hit, negative 3 pi over 6, and then on the negative x-axis, that would be negative pi, but I want to use 6, so that's negative 6 pi over 6. So that's rotate halfway. And now I have a pretty clear picture of where negative 7 pi over 6 is. 
So I want to go another pi over 6 past negative 6 pi over 6. So our angle is going to be right about here. So that angle is negative 7 pi over 6, right there. So any questions on the way I'm counting, going negative, or with the fractions that we're using? So I'm trying to give you a good intuitive understanding about how to think about angles, how to think about rotations. So now we're, we know where our angle is. We're ready to draw the reference angle. So the reference angle is going to be here. Does it go, so I need a positive angle. So is it measured upwards like this, or is it measured downwards like that? So it's going downwards because that would be counterclockwise. And what is the actual angle measurement right here? So it'll be positive. They're always going to be positive, and this one's pi over 6. So you're just going from negative 7 pi over 6 to negative 6 pi over 6. So it's just pi over 6 in between. And that's theta bar. So our last example, we'll keep it positive on this one. Let's do 19 pi over, I wanna make sure it's a good one. We'll do thirds, because we did sixths. All right, so this angle is going to be quite a large angle that's way bigger than 2 pi. So what happens when you have an angle that's bigger than 2 pi? So what that means, you're going to do more than a full rotation. And it's actually bigger than 4 pi, so we're going to do more than two full rotations. So I'll show you how to do this in two different ways. We'll do it uh, in the geometric way first, where we're going to look at basically angles, I'm going to draw them as spirals because we're going to do a couple laps. So I don't want to draw it on top of itself. So let's think about how many rotations are in there. So one rotation is 2 pi. And of course, we got to get common denominator. So that's 6 pi over 3. So how many rotations uh, are inside this angle? There's at least one. 2 takes us to 12, and it's not quite 3, because that would be 18. All right. So let's go ahead and draw our unit circle. What I'm going to do is just count laps, basically. So we'll do one full lap first. And I'm going to draw these as, spir as a spiral, because I want it. it's going to go around a couple times. So our first time around, we're going to hit 6 pi over 3. So that's our first lap, is 6 pi over 3. Now our second lap is going to be 12 pi over 3. If I did a third lap, I'd have 18 pi over 3. So that would be bigger than our angle. So we're not doing another full rotation. But we do have to figure out, well, how much, how much is the remaining rotation right here? Where is that? One going to stop. So there's 12 pi over 3. Let's count in thirds. So that's 12 pi over 3. At the top, we're going to have, oh, we can't count in thirds if we do this. That's annoying. So we'll just think about this side over here. 3 pi over 3 would be the first lap. The second lap, we'd have 9 pi over 3. The third lap, would be, no, 15 pi over 3. That would be the third lap. 
So we're a little further than 15 pi over 3. So we're actually going to go stop at 16 pi over 3. So I need to go another pi over 3 past uh, this 15 pi over 3. So another pi over 3 is going to end up right about there. So there's our crazy spiral angle right there. So we did two full laps plus this much more right here. So there's our 16 pi over 3. And I'll switch back to green for our reference angle. What is our reference angle here? So it'll just be 1 pi over 3. All right, so our reference angle is pi over 3 here. So there is a faster way to get uh, to figure out how many rotations you're looking at without sitting here basically counting on your fingers how many uh, 6 pi over 3s are hiding inside. So the way we can do we can unwind this angle because this angle was way bigger than one rotation. So and I I call this unwinding angles. You basically want to figure out how many 2 pi's are hiding inside and then what's left over when you remove those 2 pi's. So on our example, we did 16 pi over 3. So what I want to do is write it as a bunch of 2 pi's plus remainder. And I'll use the letter N to count the number of rotations. So I want to know how many 2 pi's are hiding inside, and then what's the remainder left over? So we better go into thirds. So 2 pi is 6 pi over 3. Now I'll just use capital R for the remainder. So let's take a guess and say maybe there's 3 in here. Now we know the answer is 2. There's two full rotations, but let's just say we're guessing and we don't already know the answer. Let's say, hey, maybe there's three. So let's look at three. Three times six, that's 18 pi over three. So if I use three rotations, what would r have to equal for this equation to be true? So r would be negative. 2 pi over 3. And let's think about where negative 2 pi over 3 would be. If I graph negative 2 pi over 3, I better switch colors. We'll go, let's go back to, we'll go to blue. Negative 2 pi over 3 would be the measurement right here. So remember, one, negative 1 pi over 3 would land me right there. Negative 2 pi over 3 gets me right to here. So I could think of this angle as negative 2 pi over 3. Now, the reference angle is supposed to, this is the, the larger angle back to the x-axis. I want the smaller angle back to the x-axis instead. So it's not quite the reference angle. But it can, it's certainly a better name for this angle than 16 pi over 3, without a doubt. It's a way better name than 16 pi over 3. So instead of using 3, Let's scrap that and go for 2 instead. So 2 times 6, that's 12 pi over 3 plus r, 16 pi over 3. So we solve for r, just subtract that 12 pi over 3. And we're in common denominator, so this is the uh, arithmetic's not so bad. 16 minus 12 is 4. So we have 4 pi over 3, and that would be another name for our angle. It's 4 pi over 3. 
And we run back up here. I'll use blue again to label this one. So four pi over three, the same exact angle on the unit circle, just counting the positive way without those extra rotations inside. Now once you see four pi over three, it should be pretty clear that pi over three is the reference angle. No matter which of these angles that we use, the reference angle is going to be pi over three. So no matter how we labeled our angle, our reference angle is always going to be that pi over three right there. Now you don't have to do this algebraic unwinding if your angle is not so big, but if I gave you like 167 pi over three, that's a lot of rotations. You probably, your spiral would be really ugly if you tried to sit there and count them up. So if, you, if I asked you for the reference angle for this, I'd strongly recommend that you lay it out just like that and then start guessing at what end should be. I don't think I'd give you a huge one like this on a quiz, but I think a homework problem is reasonable. It gives you have more time to think about, oh, is that 75 rotations, 82 rotations? But on a quiz, I don't want you trying to guess these huge numbers and multiplying and subtracting. Um, so that's how you can figure out the reference angle on a really big angle. And the same thing if it was negative, it works pretty much the exact same way. So we're going to do actually one last reference angle, and this one is going to be uh, in a weird way because I'm not going to use pi in my radian measure. So this one is going to be a bit strange. So this will be the fourth problem. So all, almost all the time that you're working in radians, you're going to see things written as a multiple of pi. And it's almost always going to be a multiple of pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, pi over 4. Uh, but this one's got no pi in it. So we're going to start out same way we did before, unit circle. And I could write pi over 2, pi. The only problem is I don't have any pi's hiding in here. So that's not really going to help me relate these numbers back to 5. So what I'm going to do is use the decimal approximations for these values. So we don't have denominators in this problem, but we do have to get it in a similar number system. So what I'm going to do is use our 3.14 approximation for pi. So I'm going to turn everything into decimals without any pi's inside of them. So what's the approximation for half of 3.14? So certainly close to 1.5. You don't have to be super accurate, but 1.57 is about half of 3.14. Well, it's exactly half of 3.14. But these are all just approximations. 3 pi over 2, well, I can add together those two numbers right there. And that'll give me the approximation for 3 pi over 2. So 7 and 4. So any questions on labeling in decimals without pi? So it's a little bit strange to do, but at least this way we're just dealing with decimal numbers without any pi's in them. So what quadrant is 5 radians going to be in? Quadrant 4. It's barely in quadrant 4. It's only a tiny bit bigger than this 4.71. So draw that right there. This is 5. feels very weird to write just 5 as the measure but that's the angle measure right here. <clears throat> Green marker, I will draw our reference angle that we're trying to find. How can I figure out theta bar? It's pretty easy to draw, 
but we have to compute it now. So over here is 2 pi. I'll, actually, I want to keep that on the black marker. That's 2 pi. What two angles can I add together to get 2 pi? So if I do one of the rotations and then another rotation, I'll be right up at 2 pi. So just looking at how these are laid out, if I do 5, gets me to here, plus theta bar equals 2 pi. So go 5, and then another, I don't know what theta bar is, but we'll figure it out in a minute. So go 5 plus theta bar is going to equal 2 pi. Now this is the easiest algebra problem in the world. How do I solve for theta bar? Yeah, subtract 5 and you got theta bar. So the algebra on this problem is easy. The tricky part was laying out your unit circle with uh, the decimals on it so you knew where your angle 5 would actually be. So any questions on what we just did? Now it turns out, it doesn't, as long as I got theta bar inside quadrant 4, it doesn't matter where I really drew theta bar in quadrant 4. I didn't use any knowledge of how much uh, we went across right here. I avoided doing actual arithmetic before by being very careful with my geometrical layout. But I could have laid it out way up here and still said, well, that was 5 around to here and then another theta bar and my algebra would have been exactly the same. As long as I landed in the right quadrant, it would have been the exact same algebra. So this is a good place to stop.